So you all know I'm PJ and I'm here with Dr. Alex. So I wanted to do this webinar because our home workspace is making us sick and, and it's making us less healthy and it's also fattening. So we're gonna talk about those problems and how just simple fixes and tweaks that we might not think about or know about can help a ton with wellness, but also metabolism and preventing injuries because posture, bad posture can really, really screw up a lot of stuff and cause some chronic things and, you know, even sickness and, and illness and make you more susceptible and decrease your, your immune response and all sorts of really bad things. So a lot of people, they're, they're at work and, you know, everything was fine there because they might even have had somebody on staff at the company who is an ergonomist and is, is really an expert in, in office ergonomics and they'll set up their workstation for them. They didn't really know that that happened, but it just kind of happened automatically because that's part of the wellness program for the corporation. But then when we're left to our own devices, we're all sent home and we don't know all that stuff and we don't have that expert to set up our new home office. We make some really big mistakes. And Alex and I were just talking a few minutes ago about how uh, I've seen a lot of people go home and because they just don't know how important posture and everything is and how setting up that, that space, they'll just plop back on the couch, put their feet up on the ottoman and put their laptop on their lap. And there's their new home workstation, which is gosh, it can literally be a killer. It's so unhealthy and does horrible things to your metabolism and all sorts of things. So you all know me, I'm PJ, quick introduction. Uh, Founded the X Gym, created the X Gym methodology. Author, biohacker, exercise scientist, researcher, um, avid researcher in health and fitness topics for the last 33 years. So been at it a long time, learned a lot of stuff, and just fun to keep experimenting and learning new stuff from people that I know, especially. And one of them is Dr. Alex, who I went to. Um, and I forget how we met or how we were introduced, but um, it was the initial, the initial visit was just to meet you because I'm always really enthusiastic about meeting health professionals, whether it's a, it's a health dentist or whether it's a massage therapist or chiropractors, you know, whatever. Dr. Josh is another one of my favorites. And so, and, and they all have their own specialties, which is really exciting. So it, it, it's fun for me to have this big um, talent pool that I know of these professionals and experts in different areas to be able to, to help people because it helps me help people too. So I went to Alex just to kind of get his philosophy and, and see, what, and he had a really different approach. And it was, it was more of a, you'll, you'll correct me when I'm wrong, not if I'm wrong, but when it's more of a trigger point kind of thing where, you know, pressure points and his, his favorite tool is, is this. It's oh, yeah. And it's an amazing thumb because it's super strong, super buff <laughs> and <laughs> x gym style buff. Yeah. And, um, you know, so he's doing these, these interesting techniques, you know, with, with pressure and, and uh, trigger point stuff and you're releasing things that don't need to be there overreacting and helping to adjust and he's he's less the crack and pop and more of the you know the hands-on almost like an athletic trainer um pt kind of style uh and and i was having some shoulder issues and my the root of my problem was was mostly stress and i knew that it's called tms tension myos myositis or myoneural syndrome and, but over the time, it, I'd start to build up adhesions. So Dr. Alex was getting in there with his thumb and breaking up a lot of adhesions and showing me stuff to do, arrange most of the stuff and, and got back and got great. So, you know, even when it's not an injury per se, there's, there's problems. And that relates specifically to this posture stuff because we can have problems like that without having an injury. You know, when we think of injury, we think of a, a, a trauma where you know, we fall or we, where we, we, we lift a heavy weight 
the wrong way too fast or something and we tear something and that all certainly happens but injury doesn't have to be acute it can be just it can come from bad posture it could come from forward head posture it could come from standing wrong or sitting wrong and then it can be chronic and 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 it can turn into to things with adhesions and things so I'm going to hand it over to Dr. Alec to talk more about that, but starting with his introduction. Yeah, so uh, so I'm Dr. Alex Ingen. I, uh, I work for Arosti Rehab Centers. Um, it is a soft tissue injury company. And so just like PJ was saying, you know, injuries aren't always that traumatic injury. Sometimes it's just sustained posture. Uh, and we have different loads or different, uh, you know, different stressors into the body that can um, they can end up recreating these, these painful uh, incidents. And so what we do is, uh, you know, we, we pride ourselves on empowering patient, patients and shortening down treatment plans as much as we possibly can. Uh, on average, as a company, we're three to four visits per complaint. Uh, but a huge portion of that is, is through education. And that's why I think I'm excited about today because I, I love yammering about this kind of stuff uh, and, just, and just talking about it. So... Yeah, you know, one of the things that we do, like PJ kind of mentioned on, is we do a lot of soft tissue uh, manipulation. So just basically working with my thumbs, um, and he'll attest to that. In the moment, it's not the most lovely experience, but usually it's always based on getting to a goal, um, and we can do that pretty effectively. And then the other component to this is, is the rehab side, which I think also fits right in with, with you, what uh, PJ is doing at at X Gym, you know, we teach basic motor patterns and we teach, you know, how to load and stretch the tissue appropriately so that it's not going into this inflammation cycle. Um, and then, he, you know, the individual can get back to the gym as quickly as they can with a pain-free range of motion and continue to, to build the capacity of their body. Yeah, thanks. Um, I want to apologize to some of the people I just admitted. I think they were sitting in the waiting room for a while. Sorry, because I got distracted with talking. So Doc Alex was just giving his intro and kind of what he does, and we're talking about um, posture. So I want to get into that. And the reason that it's such an alarming and important thing is because when you're seated in an office chair that has good ergonomics, your metabolism is lower than of course, when you're, you know, lying down. And by the way, lying down and sleeping used to be the lowest our metabolism could go. But there's something that brings it lower than that now. It's watching, it's sitting and watching TV. Because what happens is the TV, the certain wavelengths of the light and this kind of kind of the droning effect of the, of the television shows and the, the flicker of the screen, those all, we didn't really know this when we invented TVs, but we discovered it over time that it puts our, our brain waves into a certain state, a certain level of alpha that is actually lower than even sleeping brain waves as far as the metabolism is concerned. So now we have a new low with our modern society. It's when we're watching TV and usually we're also watching and eating. And so you take your metabolism down and your calories up and you know you can see what that does. But a lot of people have gained weight in this, this lockdown because mostly because they were sent home and they're in their home and they're mostly sitting and most a lot of people have chosen to just sit on the couch put their feet up and get comfortable and put their laptop on their lap and that's their new home workstation which is doing horrible things for posture but also doing horrible things for metabolism because that computer screen is doing similar things to the television screen and so when you're really comfortable and you're really relaxed you think you're really happy and feeling really great, but your metabolism is probably going even below sleeping levels. And so this increase in sedentarism, we're not running errands anymore. We're not going to meetings, meeting people at coffee shop. We're not getting up and walking to the water cooler. We're not going to the bathroom because the bathroom is closer and the office is further. We're not meeting in people in the hallway when we're doing all that and talking and interacting. We're not concentrating as much because 
I don't know if you knew that the brain burns 20 to 30% of your calories, just your brain every day. That's what a, that's like what a calorie hog it is. And when we're around people in an office setting, we've, we've gotten out of our home. We're in a different mode now. We're using more brain energy. We're, we're interacting socially with other people because we're social animals and we really have to have that and we're burning more calories. So when we're at home, our metabolisms have crashed. We're probably eating more. We're stressed, so it's probably comfort food. And it's just the perfect storm for weight gain, but also for, for horrible posture habits. And so I want to start with that. So Alex, if you could talk about some of the most common mistakes. I already mentioned one where people are just kind of kicking back on the couch. But some of the other thing, common mistakes and people, things people can do to correct their workspace to, and why, why posture is important. Yeah, for sure. So first of all, I knew that, uh, I knew that it was about 20% of the calories that you take consume in a day are, or that you burn in a day are uh, eaten up by the brain, but a lower level of uh, met metabolic rate while just sitting and watching TV. That's incredible. I did not know that. Um, and the, the funny thing is that when we end up getting into this position, we stay there for even longer and prolonged periods, right? Getting into the spaced out position, or the spaced out mind state. Yep. Um, and I think, so there's a concept called hysteresis. And what hysteresis is and how it applies to the body is basically tissues, particularly ligaments, but you can also apply it to, to, mus to musculature. It'll adapt to its tension level. So let's think about, you know, what you're doing you're in, when you're sitting into that, into a bad posture, into a sofa, right? Sofas are super plush and cushy. And so we end up kind of rounding out that lower back and, you know, our, our hips are flexed up. So the hip flexors are, are, um, are shortened and they adapt to that shortened and more tense state. That lower back is going to start stretching out a little bit more because we're just, have, we have that nice kind of flexed posture and the glutes aren't working at all. So really quickly, you know, over about 15 to 20 minutes, our tissues start to adapt to this process. And it, it takes only 15 to 20 minutes, but we're sitting there on the couch potentially for hours, especially in COVID, uh, in COVID times. So we're sitting there for hours, and the moment that we stand up, the exact opposite happens. The, the hip flexors are going to start yanking, uh, yanking down, being overly tight. And where do those hip flexors go to attach? but to the, to the low back, the lumbar spine. And so all of a sudden we have these super tight hip flexors. We have a low back uh, musculature like uh, the paraspinals that aren't going to be working quite as well because they've been asleep this whole time. And one of the best lumbar and, and hip supporters in the, the glute max and the glute med, the, ba the major hip stabilizers, they're not working either. They've been asleep for hours. So all of a sudden you stand up and you have you know, certain musculature on the front side that's overly tight and certain musculature on the back side that's not working at all. And that's where we start getting these pains. Uh, you know, we have this, basically this imbalance that starts to occur just from our inactivity in a poor posture. And so one, that's why posture is important. We need to be able to, uh, you know, first of all, be able to understand that you know, in 15 to 20 minutes, getting up or, and moving or, or changing positions is just gonna help us. But on the second level is if we can end up supporting that lumbar spine a little bit better, if we can end up starting to help support the hips and the glutes, uh, we can end up really preventing a lot of those, those pains, which prevents you from coming to see me and having to deal with the evil thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So the, the biggest yeah. mistake people make, of course, is trying to get comfortable. And, and I tell people, hey, beware of comfort. Because the, the, the human body is created to be as efficient as possible, to conserve energy. And you know, it's a survival mechanism. And so when, when, when you feel comfortable and you feel good and comfortable, and you're in your comfort cocoon is what I call it, you know, we've got our thermostat set for a three degree variation and we've got our blankets and we've got our really soft couches and we've got all the stuff that we didn't have 2000 years ago. And to make us more comfortable, and sure, it feels good in the short term, but it can be a killer 
Now, it's not to be, I'm not saying we all need to be uncomfortable, but I'm just saying beware of comfort and spending too much time in your comfort cocoon. Of course, it's a luxury and it's nothing wrong with going into your comfort cocoon, but to come in and out and to be especially beware of it when you're working because you can zone out and four hours can pass and it feels like 10 minutes. If you're having fun or focused or in your meeting or you're interested or whatever, and, and you're in that, that posture that we've been talking about so far. And four hours can do a lot of damage, you know, with the shortening of the certain muscles and lengthening of other muscles and just even bone density over time. Sure. So how about if, we, if, if I move my computer so you can see my workspace and then you can give me some, some goods and bads on this and but before i do it because i'm going to have to unplug so i have purposely plugged in my computer and i my ipad is plugged in and my phone is plugged in and a lots of lots of stuff are plugged in and so you know why does that matter well we're, we're also talking about emfs which is which is another health issue and electromagnetic fields or frequencies. And so I've got a little Jerry Ray gizmo that I made here, and this measures my body voltage. So if I, this, this wire right here is plugged into the ground hole in the wall, and that hole goes to an actual stake in the ground somewhere, and that's how, that's how buildings are grounded. And so this is the voltage of my body. Watch when I grab a hold of this. I'll put it up here so you can see. So right now there's really nothing going on. Now I'm going to grab it. Boom, I jumped up to four volts. That's my body's voltage. And if I move closer to the computers and everything that's plugged in, now I'm all that. See, I'm getting closer to those EMFs. And you could see that big jump. Now move away from those EMFs. And you can see it drop off. But look what happens when I pick up my grounding strap, which I usually wear on my wrist. So it dropped through the, it dropped through the floor, okay? So, way, so it's mitigating that, that EMF exposure. Now watch what happens when I unplug my computer. So it dropped from the high threes to the low threes. Now I'm gonna unplug my iPad. Now it dropped even more. So every time I unplug something and disengage the power supply, that is dropping down. Now I'm gonna unplug my phone. Drops down a little bit more. Now I grab that grounding strap again, and then it, that's where it really drops through the roof or the floor. So I'm, this is, I'm just holding on to it because it's a conductive material. I usually wear it on my wrist. So that's just a little fun fact before I un unplug my computer. And just a little hack you can do just for health reasons, just so you can see in real time what that, what effect electronics have. So I'm gonna put you over on my kitchen counter so you can see my workspace. Oh. Dr. Josh and Dr. Alex, you're gonna yes, love sir. this thing. So this right here is a gizmo gadget that I'm going to show you and see the motor in the back there. That's a vibration motor. So Alex, this was inspired by you. All right. I actually missed your thumb. <laughs> so what I do is I, I lean up against that eye bolt and I do pressure point, and it's just the perfect size, so I can dig really deep. And then I turn on the vibration motor to, to kind of wiggle in there even deeper. And it's also grounded. It's plugged into the ground wire with the, with the wire there. But I um, thought you'd like that. So it's a awesome. Bit, it's a prototype, but it's really cool. It's still not as good as your thumb. But it's better, <laughs> better than the, uh, the lacrosse ball that you gave me. Yeah, you know, we use a lot of the lacrosse ball and the, and the foam rollers as needed, but the, uh, the specificity of, of the thumbs just can't be beaten. Uh, we try to give those tools out, but 
Uh, that's pretty cool. That's a nifty little gadget and gizmo you have there. Yeah, I have to show. I have to bring it out and show you. So here's here's my workspace, and normally I would have the computer that's over there now up here. So I'm doing this, and then I'll have the iPad down here, or I'll I'll swap them out so one or the other is up there, and then I can sit down, and it's a taller chair than a shorter chair, which is better. So I'm doing this a lot, which is a little bit of activity. And I'm sure you'll concur that it's not actually good to be standing all the time or sitting all the time. Sitting's okay, just not all the time. And so I'm right. switching back and forth, up and down. Now you can get those really super expensive stand-up desks that go up and down, and those are great, but this is the $20 version and it works just fine. And so I can also move it on this other table closer and farther, but so what do you think so far? So I, I, think, you're, I think you're actually doing great. So what tends to happen is that you're right. Uh, let's start in the standing position, uh, just because that's where you're at. Oftentimes, even the people end up getting the, the sit to stand desks or the, uh, you know, the, I don't know what you would, I don't, Remember what they're called. We use those same stands in grad school. Um, but if you have the stand on top of your table, the mistake that people will often mute, use is, uh, is first of all, they'll make it too low to the point that, um, that their elbows aren't going to be able to, uh, that they're going to have to basically turn into a T-Rex coming up here, or they're going to have to be reaching way down low in order to, to do any typing or mousing around. The second mistake is oftentimes exactly, yep. The second mistake is oftentimes they bring it the uh, the device or the device <laughs> the uh, stand too close or too far away. Too far away doesn't really happen very often, but if you bring it too too close, oftentimes, yep, exactly, you'll find that T Rex position again. The foundational position that we need to find is what we call scapular retraction, and basically what that means is if we can take the shoulder blades. And imagine that we're tucking them down and back into our back pockets. So if we're kind of in this rounded shoulder position and we roll back and down, not too much to the point that we're going into a ton of extension and push, pushing our chest out. But if we can find that position, that's going to be the, the neutral and most optimal position for the shoulders and elbows uh, provided and wrists even provided that that, uh, desk isn't too far away or too close. Um, this, the next point that you want to pay attention to is looking at the head. If he's standing and looking at the, at the screen, he should have basically a, a gaze into the horizon, right? So the, the hope is that you can end up keeping a neutral spine and the ears basically over top of the shoulders, uh, over the, the middle of the shoulder blade. You're not blade, sorry, but the middle of the deltoid. Now, what this ends up, this is actually an interesting uh, discussion because each inch that he moves his head forward, kind of like this, adds an extra 10 pounds onto the mid, uh, to the mid spine, what we call the thoracic spine. So that's going to end up increasing a ton of pressure and a ton of, uh, ton of basically resistance into all of the musculature into the back of the neck, basically holding on to this big bowling ball uh, that's on the top of your body. Um, and so what will end up happening is oftentimes we'll end up getting, you know, people come in with pain right here. You know, they'll, they'll be pointing right at their trap, maybe a little bit more uh, in between the trap and in between the shoulder blade. But that'll be where it starts to hurt. And it's because of this position. They'll put that head forward. They'll allow those shoulders to roll forward. So to kind of recap, if we can get our shoulder blades set, so they're tucking into the back pockets, and get the ears over top of the shoulders, so that our gaze is kind of into the horizon and our screen is appropriate uh, at the appropriate height, so that we can just look straight into it. That's the optimal standing position. Now, if we he was told uh, PJ was totally right in saying that moving around is going to be kind of the best, uh, you know, is going to be the best way to prevent any injury. So like I said earlier, 15 to 20 minutes is when that concept of hysteresis 
tissues adapting to their to their tension. It only takes 15 to 20 minutes to start. So usually what I'll tell people is every half hour or so, change your position in some way. Now, he was right in saying you don't want to stand up all day long and you don't want to sit all day long. So if we were to go into the seated position, he'll want to basically find, there we go. This is, a, this is going to be kind of starting from the ground up. So we want to start with feet flat out onto the floor. We want to tuck our tailbone underneath us to the point that we're sitting on our sit bones. At that point, we're going to have basically a nice tall torso. There we go. Move in the chair. A nice tall torso that's going to, to have that kind of proud chest and not letting those shoulders fall forward. And that's going to be kind of the neutral spine position that we want. From there, we can start looking at, you know, what level is our, is our keyboard at? What level is our screen at? And the same kind of things should kind of follow. The keyboard should be directly in front of us, but not too close so that we're sitting in this kind of T-Rex position. And it shouldn't be too far away so that we're just maybe going into, into zombie mode. Um, and then we'll want to go into looking at that scapula, so that shoulder blade. Same instruction. Stack those guys so that they're tucking into your back pockets and then ears over top of the shoulders so that your eyes are looking into the horizon. And that's going to be the basic setup for how we want this. And you can always tweak things around a little bit as far as, you know, tools and, uh, and things that we have at the office for better wrist health, for, uh, for better neck and shoulder health. But if we understand those basics, that's a great foundation to move from. Yeah. Hopefully that wasn't too much talking. That was a lot. <laughs> well, that was great. So one of the, I think one of the disadvantages of a chair like this is that my, my feeder it causes my femur to come down a little bit. It would be nice if maybe if I had a stool because it is exactly there. yeah. Or, or maybe even put a feet back here like this would, would be better than probably down like this. Although maybe I should be down like this sometime and up here sometime. And that's exactly what I was going to say. You know, even from a seated position, because, um, you know, you're not going to always have this luxury of sitting down to, move, to standing up to moving around a little bit. You know, if we're in a meeting that, that's taking an hour long, uh, you know, you probably have that ability to stand up, but you don't always want to be that kind of weirdo. <laughs> so, so just moving around and repositioning ourselves can end up in, with, within a seated position can also help. So like PJ was saying, moving the feet from flat on the ground to moving his feet up onto the onto the uh, the rods beneath his butt to uh, to flexing his butt, so he's kind of doing what we call a, a a butt squeeze. All these are different mechanisms and different ways that we can lengthen and extend and just change the dynamics uh, that are being employed on our hips and our low back. And another thing is. Um with the with the desktop computer where you can separate the keyboard from the screen you can have that screen higher and so the keyboard can be down here and you can be looking forward but when you're on a laptop i'm either going to have to do this or then i'm going to do this where i'm looking down and so I, the, a laptop kind of has a disadvantage there too, where I think I would want to be up and down even probably more than if I were at a desktop. Right, absolutely. And I think, the, I think the, there is a disadvantage to having a, a laptop, but there's a semi-easy solution to, to mitigate that. You can just adjust the angle, and I'm doing it with my computer right now, adjusting the angle of the, um, of the screen so that your eye, your ears are still over top of the middle of the shoulder, oh, yeah. but your eyes are just gazing downward a little bit. Yeah, so then I'm not doing this. Exactly. Now, the, what I was saying earlier with gazing into the horizon, that's in, a, that's in an optimal position. But if we get into the, you know, if we get to pick one thing, the priority is going to be ears over top of shoulders. So if we have to compromise looking into the horizon, that's okay. We can end up looking down a little bit, but you're right. Maybe you just, uh, maybe you offset that disadvantage by just moving around a little bit more. Cool. So when people, when they have um, 
fixed their issues with the posture and the ergonomics and stuff for their workspace, what can they do to help with aches and pains and things, you know, like that, that trap that you were talking about? Is there anything they can do to, to help get those to alleviate that? Of course, you're talking my language now. So <laughs> did you, uh, are, we, are they going to have access to the slides? Yeah, so we are going cool. to, yeah, we're going to, we're going to follow up with everybody um, and g give you access to the page where, Dr. Alex has some notes and some citations and things and slides and stuff like that. But if you want to do a screen share, if you need to do a screen share right now, you could certainly do that. It Let's do that. There we go. Is that working? Yeah. Okay, cool. So I've basically put in seven, you know, seven variations on, on things and tips that we can end up doing at the seated position or at the, in the office um, with nothing more than maybe just a band, um, and foam roller and lacrosse ball, um, just simple tools that you can kind of have at your disposal. Uh, and they're not going to cost too much because that's one of the other things that we, you know, we, we definitely pride ourselves in as much as we love, uh, you know, squat racks and, and huge bands and dumbbells and kettlebells. We want to make this accessible to everybody. Um, and so we try to, we try not to sharpen the marble. If the marble's already round, then we're going to try and, and use it that way. The first one here is just called the executive stretch. And this is one that I like to do uh, just kind of in, in office. If I'm sitting down and talking to a patient for, for a little while, I'll get into this kind of figure four position. And as I'm talking, I'll just put a little bit of overpressure on to the outside of the knee. Now, what this is doing is, is stretching a variety of different muscles, but it's working on the external rotation of the hip. Uh, one of the major things we tend to do in a seated position is fall into the opposite internal rotation, um, which is going to be kind of assisted by a tight hip flexor. So um, that's one of the, you know, one of the things that we can end up doing to one, reduce these aches and pains as they start to start to occur. But it's also something that we can end up doing just kind of throughout the day as part of that concept of changing positions. The next one is, is a seated row. Now, this one is, is going to be, uh, I think, best done with a band or something that we can end up uh, getting a little bit of resistance in. But ultimately, the goal here is going to be uh, contracting the, the, the middle of the back a little bit more. So we're talking lats, rhomboids, lower trap as much as possible for anybody that's uh, it's kind of an anatomy buff. So what we're doing, this, what I guess this person is doing in this position is keep, keeping the elbows at the ribs and really the wrists at a 90 degree position. So when she's contracting, she's opening the chest up and basically squeezing the shoulder blades back and down as if you were gonna pinch a pencil in between the shoulder blades at about the mid back. And that's just a simple contraction that can help, like I said, open the chest a little bit so we don't find ourselves in this rolled shoulder position too much. Uh, and we'll start activating that low, or activating the, the back a little bit more for better support. The next one is going to be the seated neck stretch. Now, I don't know if you guys caught it, but I was kind of doing this earlier <laughs> as, as we were talking. So, um, so this one is basically going to be, you just grab down uh, at the base of the chair and you can lean to the opposite side. This will end up helping to stretch the, what's often the overactive upper traps. Um, and depending on the angle that you're taking the head position into, you can end up stretching a couple other muscles like the, the uh, scalenes that end up helping with breathing. Um, preferably, you know, those, are, those muscles there are going to end up helping with the last portion of breathing if we take a huge breath. But people that tend to get really stressed or just kind of live in this chest breath world like most people do, they use a lot of those scalenes and they get super tight and can cause headaches. Uh, kind of classic tension headaches. So grabbing onto the chair, tilting the head, and changing the head position to find what's a good stretch for you. Now, as far as stretches go, uh, I'm more of a fan of a shorter period, sorry, sorry a, uh, a less intense, but a longer period of stretching. So if we're talking, you know, hanging out for a minute for a mild to medium stretch, that's kind of what I prefer. There are a lot of studies out there that say 
you know, stretching is not going to end up helping with, uh, with injury prevention. But that doesn't mean that stretching doesn't do anything. Stretching is going to do, uh, it's going to end up helping reduce the amount of what we call facilitation into a muscle. So if a muscle like that, that trap is overactivating all the time, we can sit into a stretch like this, let that tissue adapt to its new tension, which is kind of here. And that'll end up decreasing the amount of, of uh, activity that it's using. The next one's going to be a chin tuck. And this guy's got a goofy face, but we're going <laughs> to, we're going to roll with it. Um, so he is kind of taking on this posture of that T-Rex that we were talking about, right? Head is forward. And if you can just imagine his hands being up here while he's typing, this is kind of the, what we end up falling into. And I think this fits right into what CJ or PJ was talking about with living into the screen and kind of just getting zoned out and kind of being absorbed by the activity in the screen. The world is in front of us. So without us even thinking about it, we tend to get into this position. And it's just a little bit of a conscious effort of pulling that chin back. Now, when we say chin tucks, we can do it, uh, you know, one, one chin tuck and holding it for a long period of time. I tend to do it for about a rep of 10 or 10 reps. And what we're doing here is not just tucking the chin back, but we're imagining that we have a string at the top of our head and it's pulling our head up towards the sky. And that's going to end up helping to el elongate some of the tight musculature that gets basically shortened, just like we were talking about hip flexors do. Some of the, the small muscles at the base of the skull end up getting over tight and over contracted when we're in this head jutting forward position. Um, and so when we end up taking that chin backwards, we stretch those muscles out a little bit, and that can end up helping to decrease their facilitation, their constant contraction. The next one is probably one of my favorite exercises. It, does, it doesn't really inc uh, have to include a band, but again, just like the row, I tend to prefer it with, with a band, just because it gives you some sense of a, a resistance and tactile feedback on if we're doing it correctly. So if you grab a band and start with the elbows up against the ribs and slowly externally rotate, out to the side, thumbs or palms up and thumbs outward. What we're doing when we're working this movement is we're having to focus on uh, contracting that scapula back and down and make making sure that this shoulder isn't rolled forward. We can even combine this with the chin tuck that we talked about before that. It's kind of a combined movement, but we're just ingraining that motor pattern of, uh, of basically a proper posture with shoulders rolled back and chin tucked in. This is also going to end up helping with the external rotators of the shoulder. So uh, some muscles that oftentimes don't end up getting worked a ton throughout the day, but play a huge importance in uh, translating power between the hand and the torso. So once we get back into X gym, this is how we end up increasing uh, increasing our strength and end up increase, uh, decreasing our likelihood for injury. So the next one's going to be the hip flexor stretch. Again, this one can be changed into a longer, uh, longer form, minute to two minutes for a mild to medium intensity. I actually like this position or a variation of this position um, where if you're at the office or at home and you have a desk that's just, you can't end up raising it up and down or you don't have the, the stand itself. If I'm changing positions from seated to, uh, to something else, you know, I'll do the executive stretch, but I like moving to a kneeled position. It's going to end up allowing the extension through the hips to straighten out or to stretch out those hip flexors. Again, this is something that I did in grad school quite a bit. Um, and if nobody's looking, you just don't look that weird. <laughs> but this is going to be something that we, we can end up doing to end up increasing those hip flexors flexibility. Um, so what she's doing is basically taking a, an elongated stride, right? Putting the knee onto the floor, squeezing her butt and pushing her pelvis forward. When she does this, she can expect that she's going to get a, a stretch kind of into this region right here, the front of the hip. And then the last one is super simple, the seated press up, what we call the glute squeeze, right? 
So with this one, it's just about activating those glutes. Earlier, we were talking about, you know, if you sit down in a, you know, for too long, the glutes just aren't being activated. That's when we see atrophy. And that's when we see kind of the muscle tone and, and strength loss. So what she's doing here, and you can't see it, is just basically squeezing the glutes. And when she does that, you can see a little bit of a lift up. And you can do this for a hold, 30 seconds on, relax. 30 seconds on, or you can do it for repetition. But just one more way that we can end up being in, a, in the office, changing the demands and dynamics of, uh, of what's happening in the seated position on our pelvis and really preventing any of that muscle loss into the glutes, a major hip stabilizer. And those are just a few ways that we can end up, uh, you know, really changing the, the strength of our, uh, I guess the strength and tension preventing that lower cross syndrome, you know, having too much tension into the front and, and having too little tension into the back. But we can also end up using, like, she, like uh, PJ was saying, lacrosse balls or foam rollers or the gadgets and gizmos um, just to work out some of the, the hypertense musculature. And I don't really have any pictures of that. But those are always going to be great tools that you can pack up with you and take to the office, uh, or maybe work through the glutes a little bit, work through the, the low back and decrease the tension. That's great. I've got mine handy all the time. I have hey, perfect. a backpack too, but um, it's a super tool. It's a great tool. And so thanks for all that. And we're getting close to the, the Q and A time. And so that's the main part of our presentation. And so if, now when I'm finishing up the main part, if you could enter your emails in the chat, then I'll have them. And if that's too cumbersome, you can just email me your email, pj at xgem.com. And it's, it needs to be the, the, your favorite email for receiving my PDF book update. So the best email for that. Just to remind you all, um, it's a 20% metabolism boost from sitting to standing. So again, you don't wanna be standing all the time or sitting all the time, but when you do stand up, it's a 20% it's a boost just from standing up, which is so significant. And then uh, at one of my offices, I used to have a desk where I could put a treadmill under it. So I was doing a one mile an hour walk while I was standing, which was another 20 or 30% boost. So from seated, that's a, that's a big jump, but that's a, that's a little bit um, militant fanatic for a lot of people. So I, <laughs> I just usually say, hey, stand up more. Another thing that has, I found useful is to set yourself a timer that automatically resets when it goes off. So for 20, 30, maybe 40 minutes at the most, that timer's going to go off and just make a sound to remind you to change position or to do something. So here's, here's, here's the one, the outward rotation thing that I have. I have it sitting here at my desk. And so I do that exercise just sitting here. And it can be underneath, you know, you can adjust your camera so the person on the other side doesn't know you're doing your outward rotation exercises, which I'm doing right now, but you can't tell because it's, see? So, and this, this is how you would do it. Just straight out, and I, I like, you know, you know me, time under tension. So I don't come in too far to ever relax like this. This is the inward, this is the outward, and I'm keeping those elbows in. I'm nice, slow, controlled motion, so I'm not bouncing or anything, trying to keep it level, so good nerve training, all that kind of stuff. But that's a great, that's a great hack right there. Plus, it's enough to even get me hot. I'll, I'll be warm. If I really push it on this, I can even get to the point where I'm starting to sweat a little bit, just sitting there. Nobody even knows. <laughs> and, and so it, physics says that when you're exercising, as soon as you start to get hot, that means you've, you've already burnt about seven to 10 calories because calories liberate as heat. So that's a good sign. And another hack that I do is if I'm sitting or standing or whatever I'm doing, if I'm sedentary in a meeting and I start to get cold, instead of going over to the thermostat and turning up the heat, 
I will lower the screen and do this. It looks like I'm sitting, but I'm not. The chair is away. I'm doing an air chair. And so until I get hot, now I don't need to turn the thermostat up because I just turned my own up and my metabolism. Another thing that's really important is to keep hydrated. You might have noticed my gas can here that's a gallon. And this is my water bottle. And I'm just constantly cranking on that because hydration is huge. A lot of people forget it, especially when they go into a new paradigm shift where they've they're, they're, they might have had good habits at work, at their home, at their work office, but now, boom, everything is gone, and all those habits go out the window when they, when they go home. So they have to reestablish all those new habits. So just remember, this is really important. That recurring alarm that goes off might be um, another thing to trigger you to chug some water. And then open windows is really important, too, because toxins – are fattening and what most people don't realize is indoors you're you're gonna you're probably gonna be breathing more toxins than outdoors because of you know the volatile organic compounds from the paint and the carpet and the things and when you open up your windows and you're getting that fresh air less toxins and toxins are fattening so that's another reason that people are getting gaining weight in this lockdown is because they're inside with closed windows and breathing in more toxins. And then blue, too much blue light is a problem and it can damage your eyes, but it can also affect your metabolism, drive it down like the TV thing. And I was talking about, these are the cheap version of, of blue light blockers. This is 10 bucks, but uh, you can go fancier than this. If you care what you look like, obviously I don't, but, <laughs> but I also have a, an app on my screen on the computer. It's called Iris, and it, it blocks out most of the blue light. But I wear these two, which, which is the double whammy, double duty. And then sometimes if, if there's something small on the screen and I find myself squinting, I'll put on my pinhole glasses, which takes the eye strain out. And if you can see, there's little, see those little pinholes in there? And it, it helps me focus without squinting and straining my eyes. So there's another little hack. I could go on and on, but, but that's about it because I want to get to the Q&As if anybody has any. And remember to, to enter your emails here and, and I'll send you a copy or you just email me direct pj.xgym.com. So any questions or comments so far? And if you do have one, you will have to unmute, click your unmute first before you start talking because everybody's automatically muted. I think I'm unmuted. I yeah. put this into the chat as well. I just wanted to know if we could get a copy of your slides. Yeah, so um, we'll put our heads together after this and, and get his slides into a, or maybe just a PDF, a series of PDFs. Mm -hmm. And we could send that yeah, out. I was going to say, from from you had it in LibreOffice, which a lot of people won't have. That can export to a bunch of stuff. But if you export it as PDF, almost everyone will be able to open that. Yeah, yeah, we can absolutely do that. Yeah, June. Um, I I don't know anything about this question. I'm going to ask, but does anybody know anything about fascia? Uh -huh. uh. <laughs> you, you're talking my language, June. Uh, so, uh, so fascia is, uh, it's a connective tissue. And when we talk about kind of what we're doing, uh, PJ talks about it just briefly when he's talking about mild, uh, well, I think you said myofascial release. Is that what you said? Or you said, uh, trigger point therapy. Yeah. Okay. So similar thing, similar concept is called, uh, it's called myofascial release. Um, and that's primarily what we work with, uh, when we're doing our, our, manual therapy, kind of my devilish acts with the thumb. <laughs> what we're doing is um, adjusting and manipulating the, the, the demands on this fascia. So what is it? Fascia is a connective tissue. It's highly innervated. It has poor blood supply. And so what that means is when we end up sitting down, and, and really this fascia covers bone, muscle, organs, um, and each individual muscle has its own layer of fascia. So when we sit down for long periods of time, the fascia is going to end up 
helping to adapt to that muscle's length. Uh, and really what that, the reason that it's so highly innervated is because it helps to, to uh, pay attention to tension, basically. So it'll end up helping me close my eyes and touch my nose. Is it sending all of the uh, all of the fibers or all of the uh, input extra external input and sending it into the brain, understanding how much tension is in the bicep and the tricep? So it becomes this very complex system. Um, but when we're working through with our thumb, what we're doing is is mainly attacking the fascia. Uh, we can talk about individual muscles, uh, you know, as a as a general idea. But oftentimes what we'll end up doing is attacking to those junctions where you have one muscle crossing over the top and one muscle sliding underneath. And when they work in different planes, they'll end up, if they're not working appropriately and doing the proper sliding and gliding, you'll end up getting an inflammation process that ends up causing thickenings of, a thickening of fascia. Um, and that can be recognized in different terms like adhesions. So, you know, if somebody says they're working, you know, myofascial release, breaking up adhesions, that's kind of a variation of what, what we're talking about. Thickenings and scar tissue and adhesions through these fascial planes. Right. Ho hopefully I didn't lose you there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's good language that everyone can understand. <laughs> How does the uh, benefit of, of maintaining an re exercise regimen you know, we work out at X gym in the morning, and some days I'm more active than others, but some days I'm sedentary later in the afternoon for a few hours or what have you. Is there some offset then, I mean, in terms of the sedentary time, the extended benefits met, uh, uh, metabolically and otherwise from exercising earlier in the day? Mm -hmm. Uh, you're sure you're asking time of day? Time of day is part of it, but just the fact that you're active and exercising, and they talk about the extended benefits metabolically of being yeah. active and so on. Does that not help offset the negatives of being sedentary while you're at your desk? It does help cancel some of that out. It's still important to do all these things while you're at your desk. Uh, just because it's just a healthy strategy. And it's also when people are sedentary and they're, they're spending too much time in their comfort cocoon, it's, it's bad for the immune system too, which is really important for us, especially now. So to, just to spend as little time as possible in that comfort cocoon. If you're feeling too comfortable and relaxed, then just a little bit, you know, you don't have to get uncomfortable, but, but just not to, to sink in too deep into that comfort cocoon for too long, because that can be an, a, an immune issue, but also a metabolism issue. Now the exercise will certainly cancel out a lot of that. And the x especially, because the EPOC, the exercise post oxygen consumption is, is highest with high intensity training like X gym than it is with other types of training, especially traditional. That's why X gym, one of the reasons X gym 21 minute workout is equal to about three hours of regular traditional training. And because of that metabolic effect. So it's certainly making up for that, but the ideal situation is not to get in yourself a situation where you do need to make up for it. It's just to stay as healthy and in good posture as everything. So you're not having to, to try to reverse it. So that's the best of both worlds. And um, does that answer your question? Yeah. Thank you. Cool. If I could touch on that just a touch, just a little bit, uh, you know, the way that I think about it is that it ends up uh, increasing exercise you know, is going to end up increasing your capacity and resi your resilience for these, you know, negative activities. So I think PJ's right, you know, I, I'm 100% uh, there with him. You know, I think that these exercises is, are going to end up, you know, helping with the resilience and helping to prevent, you know, these negative side effects. But at the end of the day, you know, if we're just, you know, for a couple of hours into the gym versus, you know, say 23 hours at, at home and sitting in bad positions, that's going to catch up to you. 
Alex is a great resource. So he'll, his contact info is also going to be on that page that we'll put together. It'll be on the same page you went to, but we'll just expand it with notes and things and, and more links and stuff. Anyone else? Yeah, uh, Alex, I know you mentioned uh, lumbar support. I was wondering your thoughts on backrests um, versus like uh, PJ's demo before sitting forward, um, you know, what that backrest should look like and, and, or when to use it, when not to, or moving between them, that kind of thing. For sure. Yeah, I think, uh, I think it's, you know, it's one more tool in the toolbox, uh, right? So, we can end up getting those back supports that you know we can lean up against, and it can end up helping to again change the dynamics of uh, the demands on the tissue um, of the low back. But I'm personally a fan of like PJ was doing, scooting up into the uh, into the chair, so you're using your own musculature. And in my mind, that just uh, that makes the most sense. If you know you want to use that muscle. Uh, it's there. You want to use that rather than some external source that's not always going to be there for you. Um, but, you know, I think uh, things like maybe car, long car rides, I definitely end up having to, you know, to increase that, that lumbar support. And I do my, my exercises when we stop for gas and stuff like that. But you're on a nine, nine hour car ride, you're not going to be sitting, you know, right next to the <laughs> steering wheel all day long. So, um, yeah. And that's a good point because with the cars, if you if you think about our our modern posture nowadays this is this is driving because you mentioned earlier about you know paying attention so our head automatically goes forward without ever even thinking about it and then we get our computer screen in front of us and our keyboard in front of us and there's not much different between driving and on the computer and we're in this no wonder people have this this gradual curvature of the spine because of this modern, these modern technologies that we have now, and, and like you mentioned earlier, it's such a big problem because every inch forward the head goes is how much pressure? 10, ten pounds. Yeah. So that's a big deal because you see people walking around like this all the time, and no wonder they're having problems. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> Instead of tilting your head forward, is it would it be better or acceptable or to 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 tilt your back a little forward? Um, I do that occasionally for like when I'm taking a test, just for like attention, kind of like chess players lean a little a little bit forward. But I did read that it's bad, definitely bad. You know, they with, to crank the head too far forward. Yeah. So I mean, from a biomechanical standpoint, uh, I think you're in a better position if you are to lean the entire torso forward and the ears still be over the shoulders. That being said, the resistance we're fighting against is still gravity, and it's not this equal load directly on top of the center of gra our center of gravity, right? So at the end of the day, even if I'm kind of in this forward lean, po you know, forward lean posture. Uh, for too long, then, you know, the, the back of the neck is just going to end up overactivating that musculature. Um, but I, I'm personally one that, you know, never says don't do a posture. And I mean, maybe in certain cases, <laughs> but, but generally like, you know, something like that shouldn't hurt us. We should have the capacity to do that. And we can increase that with, uh, with, you know, working out and all of these wonderful things that, you know, we've been talking about. And that'll end up allowing us to make these, you know, uh, these adaptations for short periods of time. This understanding that, you know, three hours is probably going to be too long. <laughs> I love it. Now I had a question for, for June. Um, so I, I realized that I went off on a, on a tan, not tangent, but I, I went off on talking about fascia. Did you have a question about it? I've heard about this. You do fascia release and there's these really hard balls. Like like the lacrosse ball that PJ had? Yeah. And I just wondered if it's any good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so that's what we end up showing it in my office on that rehab side. Um, and I lay it out to my patients, you know, in, in pretty much four different categories. One of them is self-treatment. How can you replace me, essentially? Um, and that's, you know, with that, you can use a lacrosse ball, you can use, uh, you know, different tools that they have out there these days. We, we mainly, I guess, supply and, uh, and recommend lacrosse balls and foam rollers. But, um, but, you know, every, so fascia ends up adapting to different sorts of stimulus. 
percussion, like those vibrating guns, is, is one stimulus, or pressure is a different stimulus. Uh, and that's what we use with our thumb, is the, adapt, the, uh, the stimulus of pressure. And that's what you're using with the, the lacrosse ball. It's a little less specific, but it can do in a pinch. And it can be really helpful with consistency. Maybe I'll come, come get a lesson. <laughs> right on. Well, thanks for coming, everybody. And heads up on the, I'll let everybody know when we have more on that web page. And then I'll get you your PDF book. And it was fun having you. Thanks a lot, Alex, for coming. And for sure. For your help. It was a pleasure. Thank you guys for having me.